The BMA was set up in 1832 in the English Midlands in the Worcester Royal Infirmary by hospital physician Charles Hastings. Its first meeting was held here in the hospital's boardroom in July of that year. The association grew rapidly and established its first London headquarters in the 1870s using a number of buildings which it bought and extended and its final central London home was in the Strand at what is now Zimbabwe House. But the BMA house you see today, though it was begun in the early 1900s and not built originally for the BMA, has had a number of architects and builders who have contributed to its mixture of styles and layouts and it's been extended and developed a number of times in the last 90 years. Though it still holds the predominant style of its original architect, Sir Edward Lutyens, the most recent changes, completed in the summer of 2008, seek to combine the best of the old with the high standards and demands of a modern business centre. While the BMA was busy outgrowing its various headquarters, the famous architect of Delhi's redevelopment, Sir Edward Lutyens, was designing a headquarters for the Theosophical Society, an organisation founded in New York in 1875 to promote the wisdom of God through all religions. The religious group ran out of money, and so it was that the BMA took possession of an unfinished building in 1923 on a lease of 200 years for a reduced charge of £50,000. They also planned to extend the building towards Tavistock Square and across a small rear garden which Lutyens had planned. The garden area had been occupied by Tavistock House, whose 18 rooms had been the home of novelist Charles Dickens in the late 1850s. Lutyens was re-engaged, and in July 1925, BMA House was opened by King George V and Queen Mary, grandparents of our current Queen. Wrought iron gates in the courtyard, designed by Lutyens as a memorial to BMA members killed in the 1914-18 war, were dedicated by the Archbishop of Canterbury. But escalating costs for the building, which had led Lutyens to fall out with the Theosophists, now had the same effect with the BMA. So it was over the next 40 years that different architects and builders worked on extending and modernising the building, including Cyril Wernerna Smith and Douglas Wood. In 1954, Sir Roland Pierce designed the central courtyard fountain and its surrounding statues as a memorial to doctors killed in World War II. In the 1960s, the building was extended again, and in the 1980s, controversially, the uncompleted Lutyens barrel vault ceiling in the Great Hall, originally designed as the Theosophist's temple, was partitioned off horizontally and a new suite of meeting rooms created. The only remaining sections of the barrel roof can be seen today in two of these rooms. The Great Hall, having been a meeting room and a badminton court, was reconstructed and became the BMA's library. In 2006, HOK International were appointed to oversee a radical plan to combine the best of Lutyens and his successors with the modern needs of the BMA's members, its staff, its tenants and many outside users. HOK's vision, with the Wallace Group as its main contractor, was to preserve and restore the best of traditional designs but bring in modern techniques and modern facilities to make the building once again the showpiece it had originally been. The heart of Lutyens' building was the Great Hall, and so it remains today. Restored and modernised into a 300-seat conference hall with a stunning retractable seating system, the first ever to be installed in the UK, which allows the 115 feet long space to be adapted for all sorts of needs, full seating theatre style, full exhibition, dining area, or anywhere in between. One striking new feature is in fact part of Lutyens' original unrealized vision for the building. Lutyens envisaged a walkway round the central courtyard which would link all parts of the building indoors at ground floor level. In 2008, his dream has been realized by the creation of a huge steel bridge above a new garden room cafe area which originally housed the 90-seat council chamber of the BMA.
as all historic buildings should, BMA House has its mysteries. For one, it is not what it seems. Demolition on the first floor of the main building of modular offices and corridor walls to create the new 97-seat debating chamber for the BMA revealed massive steelworks embedded in the brickwork, probably the result of building material shortages in the 1920s, but nobody knows. This steel has had to be replaced and over two tons of boats now support it. A major change to the building is the creation of a new main entrance. Created from a closed in and little used hallway, the entrance and reception area was created from staff offices, the telephone switchboard room and a public enquiry office. Taking down walls and extending ceilings back towards their original height allowed the builders to create a much more open space with a visitor waiting area, reception and conference registration facilities, leading to an exhibition area and access to the new open plan library. Removal of the office space allowed creation of a member's lounge with its own business area and internet access. With its new meeting and conference facilities, debating chamber, garden room and cafe, BMA House is set to be a major attraction for outside business and social users in the rapidly expanding area around the St Pancras Eurostar complex and it will continue to be what Building News described it as in 1925, a notable contribution to contemporary architecture.